Prime Minister Becky Hele took the hot seats at the South African Human Rights Commission hearing into the July unrest yesterday. His relationship, or actually lack thereof, with National Police Commissioner Kechle Setole is still very much in question as well. Uh, the minister telling the hearing he was shut out of crime intelligence briefings ahead of the unrest and only received an intelligence report, listen to this, five months after the events in July. But Kele insisting he has a good working relationship uh, with Setole. His testimony follows a damning report by the panel of experts uh, bashing the security cluster and their response to the unrest. Uh, DA Shadow Minister of Police, Mr. Andrew Whitfield, uh, joining us to talk about the Minister's Day at the Commission. Mr. Whitfield, good morning to you. And I think we all felt at the time, and certainly months after, that there was a failure in communication. But based on what we're hearing in this Commission, I don't think we could have thought it was this bad. What was your reaction when you heard the testimony? Yes, well, I mean, it is completely horrific, and I don't think anybody should believe the minister when he says he has a good working relationship uh, with the National Police Commissioner. All of the evidence points in the other direction. And uh, I think that what you will uh, find is that it was the minister himself who refused to sign off on the Crime Intelligence Secret Service budget in December 2020, which led to a destabilization within crime intelligence in terms of their ability to operationalize then in the run up to the July unrest. Now, the minister is entitled to receive things, but the minister should also remember that he is not the National Police Commissioner, and this is the source of the standoff between the National Police Commissioner and the minister. The minister still thinks that he's the National Police Commissioner and that he should be involved in operational matters. Uh, but that, of course, is the function of the National Police Commissioner. So here's the question, and I don't think many people would disagree with you, that there does seem to be a bit of a graying of uh, the responsibilities. Uh, we'll get to the Police Commissioner, Police Minister issue uh, in just a moment. Mr. Whitfield, I suspect I might be losing you. The reception looks like it might be dropping, but let me ask you this question and see if we can get uh, the signal up and running again. If the Police Minister was locked out of the information. Where was the information going to? Because still nobody seemed to do anything about the unrest. Yeah, I had a feeling we might be losing you, um, Shadow Minister. I'm not sure if you heard my question. If you did hear my question, uh, perhaps you can pick up on the answer for me, but uh, the signal is a bit iffy. Sure, Gareth. The National Security Council is the correct platform for intelligence to be coordinated, and that's where the minister sits with all of the other operational heads within the security cluster, including the president. Uh, so it is entitled to receive briefings, but to say it's locked up uh, of which briefings. The National Security Council has not sat frequently enough. It should have been the platform that was coordinating all of the intelligence in the run-up to and during the unrest. Uh, but remember, crime intelligence uh, is also an operational uh, matter. The minister is not entitled to interfere in crime intelligence, nor is he entitled to, to, to party to every single decision. His responsibility is ministerial oversight. Function is as a politician, not as a police officer. And that must be addressed at the centre of the allegations that he was simply locked out of briefings on operational matters. And at what point, uh, Mr. Whitfield, would you expect the president to step in? It's one thing to have uh, allegations and rumors circulating that there is a non-relationship, something of a working relationship between the police minister and the police commissioner. But off the back of what we've been hearing in this testimony, it's now having an effect on the on-the-ground operations of the police and the safety of South Africans. At what point does the president pull them both into a room and either fire them or make a decision as to who's actually in charge? Absolutely. It is the president who has the power to uh, hire or fire either the minister or the national police commissioner. And he's been sitting on his hands for far too long while the spat between the minister and the national police commissioner is destabilizing operations within the South African police service. And I would go as far as to say that there appear to be clear factions in the senior management of the South African Police Service, with some reporting to the minister, some reporting to the National Police Commissioner. Uh, the police is a, a very clear command structure, and you, you cannot 
uh, have uh, any sort of uh, split in that chain of command, then that needs to be a very clear reporting line. And the, the president ultimately is the one who needs to take a decision. Our view is that the minister and the national police commissioner have to go if we're parting over in order to overhaul the South African police service. It's simply not tenable. Mr. Whitfield, uh, Mr. Andrew Whitfield, I'm going to say thank you very much indeed. We did drop the line ever so slightly, but we did get the gist of what you were saying uh, in terms of DA, Shadow Minister of Police, Andrew Whitfield. You remember the question we actually asked, I think mm. it was last week, uh, our viewer question, should the president fire right. uh, the police minister and the police commissioner? And so many people coming in and voting on ENC.com saying yes. Mm. Mm. Uh, and uh, it seems very much that the DA, Shadow Minister of Police, saying it's time for the president to step in and uh, make a decision. All right. Well, we'll have to see, uh, wait and see what that decision will look like, uh, Gareth, in the next coming uh, days. The president did res uh, promise to respond, of course, to uh, the report, not only from state capture, but also looking into the July unrest. So looking forward to hearing what the president's decision is on that front. But let's